Hey friends, I'm Ian, otherwise known as uh, Doc Wrangler on the trail as well as uh, YouTube and Instagram. A lot of people don't know I'm actually a board certified emergency medicine physician. That being said, while I might be a little bit of an expert in this area, this is not training. I'm giving this out for informational purposes. A lot of people on the trail will ask me to take a look at their first aid kit and determine whether or not they have everything they need. And people do a generally pretty good job. But one thing I find missing a lot of times is a tourniquet. On the table behind me, I have laid out a bunch of different tourniquets. What I'm going to do is go through them, tell you about them, how much they were, the pros and cons of each one, as well as showing you how to put this thing on. These things retail for anywhere between 10 and 30 bucks on Amazon. You can get it shipped to you in a matter of a day or two. And in the case of like a chainsaw injury or let's say the your rig rolled over and you had massive bleeding coming out of your arm, this could actually save your life. Somebody who has an arterial bleed coming from like a femoral artery or axillary artery, never mind the carotid, uh, they're only going to live for, you know, like four or five minutes before they bleed completely out. So the first thing to do anytime you see bleeding is just put pressure on it. Use your hand, hold that pressure, don't peek, just keep pressure on there for a good five minutes as you figure out what you're going to do and make your plan. Now, if you have an injury on an extremity, then you probably are going to have to say, all right, uh, how are we going to stop the blood flow above it? And in that case, that's where the tourniquet comes in. I have seven of them here on the table behind me. There, uh, Some of them are $10 and complete crap. Some of them are $30 and okay, but not my favorite. And uh, I actually have one that I kind of like. It's about 15 bucks right in the middle, and I'll show it to you here. I'm going to start with one that I see recommended a lot. This guy made by North American Rescue. It's called the CAT, the Combat Application Tourniquet, and it by far uses the best materials to make it. Gets really great reviews and uh, is the most expensive. American made, 30 bucks, nothing but the best, right? Uh, I like that they make it in different colors, including orange. I put it in this little kit, by the way, that I have. What I don't like about this thing, let me show you this to you. When we put it on, we do our little one-armed application where we pull it out, pull, get it nice and tight, all right. When you start to twist this guy, I don't know if you can see here, but there are two clips, one and two, and they're only separated by about, I don't know, an inch of material. They start to pinch my skin as I twist it on. And in fact, when I get to a spot where I actually have cut off the blood supply, it's hurting my arm right in that spot. You have to be careful putting these on that you don't get skin pinched in it. I'm not a big fan of that. And to be honest with you, while it is $30, I don't know those materials are that much better. I believe, I believe that it is a better made tourniquet. I don't know if it's $30 better. This one is made by Rhino Rescue. Very similar thing. Notice though that the strap distance here is actually more like uh, two, two and a half inches. So when you put this on, start to twist, you don't pinch there. That's kind of great. All right, then there's this guy. You know, I don't know if you can see it, it's different. The windlass, instead of being straight and going into that little clip, that little you know clip grabs it, instead it's got a loop and you're supposed to hook it on here. I've actually had trouble doing that, just putting it on myself, not under duress, not under stress. There we go, I've tightened it. Now I'm gonna to start to twist this guy and I have to figure out how I can loop this on. Ah, man, all right, I got it. But you know what? I can't say that if I was, uh, I don't know, under stress or intoxicated, that uh, I'd be able to get that quite as easily. Definitely not in my kit. I really like that they've combined a pair of trauma shears, although they are really cheap and should be thrown away, with the tourniquet inside this carrying case that has a molly backing and you just kind of put it uh, in your kit on the outside of it. So I actually really like this this mount. Um, that being said, it's uh, not the best tourniquet. It's not the best pair of scissors. Bang for the buck. I actually like this one. It has the wider space between the clips, which I like. It has a regular windlass, which I like. And it seems like overall it's, it's made decent pretty impressive. Twist it, lock it in place. Not bad, right?
let's talk just for a second about how you should store or stow your tourniquet. When this stuff's going down, man, your fine motor skills go out the window. You wanna have something that you can easily grab and just kind of pop open. So if you have this, and let's say you just have it kind of folded on itself, you need to undo it, loop it, feed it through the loop. I mean, I can do that, but why not just have that completely done already so that now I've just got this loop, and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna fold it up and have it so that when I grab it, it opens up, I put it on the limb, grab this with one hand, and just pull. And as I pull and tighten it. Another important thing about stowing these is with this little time strap, don't have it closed, have it open. Again, fine motor skills in an emergency situation tend to be a problem. So this way you can just start to twist it up and then when you're done, then you can put it across the way. If you have to open this up to get the windlass out and this is flopping in the way, man, that could cause trouble. You could lose precious seconds. You wanna get this thing pretty much as tight as you can. Don't go crazy, but as tight as you can before you start to twist the windlass. Now, I've got it on as tight as I can. I'm going to twist, and I'm actually just gonna give it one twist, and that's ah, probably enough to cut off my pulse. I feel for the pulse, I don't feel a pulse, that means the blood supply has stopped going to this arm, I don't have to worry about it bleeding. If I did not cut off the pulse with that, I would twist it to the ground one more time, it gets really uncomfortable. Now that I've got that where I want it, I'll usually take this guy, Fold it up on itself so it's out of the way and use this little time strap to cover it all up and keep it all together. Write the time on there if you can. It's helpful for people to know just how long this thing's been on. If it's on for one hour versus three hours versus six hours, it can tell us that there's more and more muscle damage that may have happened due to the lack of blood supply. All right, let me get this guy off before I start to hurt myself. Let's talk a little bit about putting it on your leg. I'm not gonna try to open my loop and feed it over my leg unless it's somebody else and you're laying down. If it was myself, I probably at that point will take it out, wrap it around the leg, feed it through, and now give it as much tightness as I can as I then start to twist. Again, everything else is the same in terms of stowage. Put that there, that across, now we're good to go. Well, there you have it. My brief discussion about tourniquets and how to use them, how to stow them, which one to get. I'm hoping that this has inspired you to look around, jump on Amazon and buy one of these so you've got it in your rig, in your medical kit, so that if you do have a friend who's bleeding out, you can actually help them. If you like content like this, please like, subscribe, and uh, oh, comment. That's the other thing. Like, comment, and subscribe. Much appreciated. I hope to see you on the trail.